the last video I made about my favorite Smogon, guides for competitively unviable Pokemon, did surprisingly well, so I decided to make another video showcasing three more amusing entries. If any of you watching haven't watched the first part of this series, be sure to watch it to get more context of what this will be about. But yeah, without delaying another three months, sorry about that guys, let's finally delve into three more of my favorite Smogon guides for competitively unviable Pokemon, beginning with... Delibird's Black and White Entry If you want the comparison of the commercialization of Christmas and Delibird, well this entry's overview pretty much has your back. Let's take a look at it, shall we? One of the worst things about Christmas has to be the mall Santas. Every year, these vapid tokens of an overly commercialized holiday pop up all over like clockwork, intending to spread joy and cheer, but doing nothing but delivering lackadaisical performances and disappointment. Many a kid's holidays have been spoiled by these mundane avatars of Kris Kringle in what can only be described as a ritualistic assassination of childhood innocence. Truly, they are a blight upon our cultural landscape, and only when they are washed from our social consciousness can some form of dignity begin to return to Christmas. Everything stated in the above paragraph also applies to Delibird. Absolutely. Now, imagine the faces of kids being so excited for a Santa-inspired Pokemon that could throw presents at its opponents. Think about the possibilities and think about where the kids' imaginations can take them for what can be thrown at the opponents. These presents can be anything, the sky's the limit after all. But well, Game Freak's imagination could only take it so far. An attack that rarely does any good damage and mostly does pathetic damage or even heals your opponents, like what were they thinking? Not only that, but Delibird's attack sucks as well, so even the best present will still do like no damage to most of its opponents. Game Freak definitely let the kids down with this Pokemon, just like the Mall Santas being forced to do their job. While I do think the Bandit like Beckham set is a pretty entertaining read in and of itself, it's mostly a serious guide. So I'll skip over to another favorite part of the guide besides the overview, which is this part of the other options section. Delibird Signature Move Present can be used for some novelty value, but let's face it, using Delibird is in itself already a gift to your opponents. Now that I think about it, having a Delibird in your team during Christmas is truly a great way to show your Christmas spirit. In the spirit of Christmas, I will be gifting you a free ELO. Well, it may be far from Christmas, but another staple of Christmas is its wintry weather. But yeah, speaking of the weather, here's our second guide for another terrible Pokemon. Cast form, specifically its black and white entry. We're starting off with a hilarious overview. In X-Men, the superhero Storm possesses the power to control the weather and was portrayed on the silver screen by the immaculately beautiful Holly Berry. In Pokemon, the artificially made cast form also has control over the weather and is portrayed <laughs> by the disembodied head of the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> I wonder which fans got the short end of the stick. Well, if I have to be honest, cast form looks more like the Pillsbury Doughboys, uh, you know what. Sorry not sorry for that image, but anyway, surely its battle capabilities aren't as bad as how badly I and the author portrayed it. Well, right? Let's face it, if you're using cast form at all, it's for the pure novelty value of Weather Ball. Oh boy, a 50 base power special move being its specialty? I'm kind of starting to notice a pattern here. Our two entries so far, Delibird and Castform, have some of the worst signature moves. <sighs> it sure isn't looking good, guys. Let's see what else is written about that terrible signature move. Having Castform on your team and not using Weather Ball is like visiting Paris without going to the Louvre, or visiting New York without eating a hot dog. Start by using the weather move of your choice, and then once the skies have changed, it's time to pound away at the opponent with Weather Ball. As if that'll do anything to it. Thunder Ball and Ice Beam are there to provide additional coverage, but you'll be so busy clicking Weather Ball you won't even realize these additional moves are there. And that cast form got KO'd 3 turns ago. Imagine being so busy using a move with the same base power as Struggle of all things, thinking it's cast form's best move. 
that's probably what I did back when I was like 8, playing Pokemon Ruby, trying cast form out. Now, let's go to cast forms, checks, and counters, just to see if it could even check anything, like, at all. If it's not hit super effectively, it counters cast form. If it's bulky enough, it counters cast form. If it has a single song reach the Billboard Top 100, it counters cast form. If it knows its 9 timetables, it counters cast form. It is said that cast form's molecules were found to be just like water, so presumably you could just stick it in the kettle and transform it into a nice cup of Earl Grey. Alternatively, mercilessly mock and taunt the trainer who sent out the cast form, and he'll soon forfeit out of sheer embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, just as I expected. But hey, at least it still has some use outside of battle. You know, like, I love Earl Grey tea. Not that I condone eating or drinking Pokemon, especially those that have been modified by scientists, and looks like something <laughs> I would prefer not to get close into my mouth. Uh, sorry for the image. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the honorable mentions. Our first honorable mention is Farfetch'd's Diamond and Pearl entry. It's mostly the author decimating Farfetch'd in a pretty funny way, such as in the overview here. I am of the opinion that as Pokemon Red and Blue were about to be released, Farfetch accidentally spilled some ink on the suit of one of the most important Game Freak staff members. Since then, they've hated Farfetch and did everything they could to make this thing suck as much as possible on the battlefield. No base stat over 65, a gazillion better normal flying types, some interesting moves, none of which can be employed to their full potential, and limited ways of obtaining it ever since the beginning of the Pokemon games. You know, Farfetch'd should probably consider doing what its Galarian relative did to the Game Freak staff members to finally warrant its overdue evolution. But well, who am I kidding? That ink spill of 96 will probably be remembered just as much as the Porygon episode of 97. Another honorable mention are Unknown's Diamond and Pearl and Black and White entries. Surely, being one of the worst Pokemon around, only learning one move will make the authors of Unknown's guides rip it to shreds, right? Well, you're in for a shock. They actually sarcastically highlight how Unknown is actually able to damage and rip through Premier Threats, which is pretty funny. Based on the unpredictability of its hidden power, which can pretty much be any type. The last honorable mention, as if this Pokemon hasn't been ripped apart enough already, is Castform's X and Y entry, written by none other than the GOAT of guides themselves, Scorp Destroyer. If you forgot who that was or you have no idea, they were the one who wrote the best guide of the previous part of this series. If you haven't watched that, boy are you missing out. Anyway, my favorite part of this entry is the overview and its set details, and we will begin with the overview. Cast form is the living proof that if man ever hopes to emulate nature's beauty in its creation of living things, there's still a long way to go. While nature has concocted majestic dragons and serpents such as Solomons and Milotic, all that the top scientists from Hoenn could muster is a disfigured cluster of water molecules that they aptly classified as a normal type and whose entire lower half looks like one huge ass. <laughs> Not very professional of them. I completely agree. Castform is probably one of the worst man-made Pokemon, not only in terms of appearances, but also in competitive viability. There are way better man-made Pokemon, whether it is appearance-wise or competitive-wise. Anyway, let's see the saddest truth of Castform in its set details. Its ability is forecast, but it doesn't even tell you that it's going to rain until the rain has been set up and you're all drenched in the downpour. Those scientists sure had one job. Hoenn scientists do seem like a failure compared to other regions. It made a Pokemon that couldn't even do its role properly and is extremely weak in battle. I feel for cast form honestly. I wish they made it a lot better. At least to the likes of its man-made counterparts in other regions such as the Porygon Evolution line or even Revavroom, but nope, it sure got the short end of the stick in so many regards. There is, however, believe it or not, another normal type Pokemon that is actually worse than Castform in every single way. It is, like Castform, unable to evolve with even worse base stats in every single stat. Let's give it up for our final victim, uh, I mean contestant, Spinda. Specifically, it's X and Y entry. This entry has one of the most tragic backstories for a Pokemon I've ever seen. So let's get to it starting from the overview. 
After finding out his fiancée cheated on him, this once lovable bear became a bar lingering berry holic who lives for the bubbling sensation of berry juice. The abnormal spots on his body aren't genetic, but rather the stains of beverages on his skin after a long night on the town. I wonder why his fiancée cheated on him. As realized by his partner, there's no real reason to use Pinda over any other normal type. Although he does have pretty respectable dance moves. How is Pinda going to cope with this tragic situation? Let's take a look at its set to find out. Drowning in Sorrow and Berry Juice. And yes, this is the name of the set. As a berryholic, it is crucial for Spinda to refill his glass, giving cause for Recycle to be his most important move. You know, a lot of alcoholics would kill to be Spinda. Imagine having unlimited drinks without paying by recycling. But then again, I wouldn't want to imagine the amount of casualties if people had that sort of power. After a few drinks, Spinda hits the floor and uses teeter dance to display his masculinity for the ladies. <laughs> Nothing screams masculinity like drunken dancing, am I right? When Spinda is matched up against another slobbering berryholic, he spins around in circles, confusing the foe in front of him, and then proceeds to dizzy punch them. Although a sucker punch can be used to get a cheap shot off a foe. What does a berryholic do other than all these things? Karaoke, of course. Spinda displays his gifted voice by slurring the words to a song, which usually ends up in the audience falling asleep. What is with Spinda's obsession of berry juice and what abilities and natures are bestowed upon this berryholic? Let's find out in the set details. Berry juice is the uniform item for all Spinda, as it is a symbol of their despair and nights at the bar, not to mention that it tastes delicious. Tangled Feet describes Spinda's dizzying walk, which is due to overconsumption of his favorite drink. After a few drinks, Spinda can get very sassy, supporting the choice for his nature, while his Eevee spread represents the fact that Spinda doesn't know what he's doing with his life. Honestly, it's pretty funny how this set is not really good for Spinda, at all. Like the Eevee spreads definitely seem distributed by a drunk person or a random number generator, which is honestly quite on brand for this Pokemon. <laughs> For example, there's no rhyme or reason for Spinda, who uses all physical moves by the way, to have 168 special attack EVs. And Berry Juice is definitely not a good item for competitive, unless say you're competing in the Little Cup tier because it only heals 20 HP which is pretty much nothing in other tiers. I love how the author just doesn't give a damn about making a competitive guide and just has fun with this, you know? Besides, no one in their right mind would use a Spinda for an actual competitive match. So yeah, I guess that's why the author just goes to town with this. Now let's see what teammates would be willing to help this poor bear out. As with any bar inhabitant, Spinda requires a designated driver to take him home. Seeing as Spinda doesn't spend his money on anything other than berry juice, it doesn't possess a phone and therefore cannot contact Uber, the app, not the tier. This being said, Spinda doesn't have any friends and thus rides on the back on any Pokemon that can carry it. However, the main teammate for Spinda is Tropius, as it harvests the berry used to make berry juice. Another teammate that I think would work for Spinda is Shuckle. Shuckle's black and white entry states that berries stored in its shell become delicious juices, which would definitely improve Spinda's berry juice flavors a lot. I can picture the bar now. Tropius for supplying the berries, Shuckle as the barista, and last but not least Spinda as its customers. But then again, Spinda was already a barista in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. Last but not least, we reach his check and counters. An empty wallet. As the saying goes, money can buy happiness. Bruh. Although in the case of Spinda, he just buys more berry juice. A broken heart. After his tragic breakup, whenever Spinda isn't under the trance of berry juice, his memories from the past fill his mind, causing him to lie in a fetal position and leaving him open to attacks. Damn, that is really sad. You know, Spinda is overdue for an evolution and a redemption arc. Hopefully maybe in generation 10 or even 100, when Game Freak finally decides to give Spinda an evolution, it finally becomes competitively viable so it wouldn't be given such a tragic backstory as its guide. And that's it for this video. Those were more of my favorite guide entries for terrible Pokemon in Smogon's strategy Pokedex. 
I don't know if I'll be releasing more of this series as there just isn't a lot of wacky or creative entries left from early generations, at least from what I've searched for anyway. I had a few more options, but they didn't exactly make the cut because they were either too short or wasn't novel or amusing enough to put in. If I'm missing any that you think deserve to be read in a future video, please let me know in the comment section below. And if we get enough Pokemon entries that deserve to be read, I will probably make a follow-up video in the future. So yeah, that's it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed the second part of this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. But delivering like like lickle lack dis uh lack a cycle lack a dice like a day sickle oh my god dude why are you such big words kiss kingle